Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we explain how to install and program ESP32 microcontrollers in Arduino IDE and Ubuntu Linux. In particular, we explain how to properly install an ESP32 library in Arduino IDE and how to write a Hello World program that will blink an LED. In this tutorial, we are using this board, ESP32 S3 Dev Kit C. And the board is shown over here. However, with small modifications, everything explained in this tutorial can be used in the case of other ESP32 microcontroller boards. ESP32 microcontroller boards are very popular in robotics and IoT communities. The board I'm using has a Bluetooth connection as well as a Wi-Fi connection. And in addition, it has 8 megabytes of flash memory, 512 kilobyte of SRAM and a large number of programmable GPIO ports and the back side of these ports is shown over here. Also this board is more powerful than most of the Arduino boards. In addition this board can also run a micro ROS environment. This information is very important for robotics and mechatronics engineers using robot operating system 2. Here's how this tutorial is organized. First, we explain how to install Arduino IDE in Linux from scratch. Then, we explain how to install an ESP32 library in Arduino IDE. And finally, we explain how to run a Hello World Blink example in Arduino IDE. For those of you who are not familiar with standard abbreviations, IDE stands for an Integrated Development Environment. The first step is to install Arduino ID. However, before we do that, we need to make sure that PySerial library is installed on the computer. The ESP32 library for Arduino ID depends on the PySerial library. And if we don't install the PySerial library, we will not be able to use ESP32 library. That is, we will not be able to establish a serial communication between Arduino ID and ESP32 microcontroller board. To install the PySerial library, we need to open a terminal. You can do it like this. And in the terminal window, you need to type this Python 3 dash M pip install pi serial. And as you can see over here, in my case, the pi serial is already installed. This is because I installed this library previously. However, in your case, you will see the installation progress. Okay, this is very important step. The next step is to download the Arduino installation file. Consequently, you need to go to this web page or you can simply Google Arduino download and over here you need to click on this link. Then I will just click on just download and just download again and you can see over here that the file is being downloaded. Usually the file is downloaded in the downloads folder. You can click over here and then you can click on downloads and here is the file. Next, you need to open a terminal window. Okay, and now I will resize this terminal window such that you can read the manual I created and such that you can follow what I'm typing. So here is the manual. Let me minimize this. Okay, so I will put it here. Let me just expand this. Okay, we are ready to go. The next step is to create an Arduino folder. In this tutorial, I will create the Arduino folder in my home folder. Consequently, you need to type this to go to the home folder. You can see where you are by typing PWD. You can see that we are currently in the home folder. Next, to create the Arduino folder, I will type this. Then, I will copy the installation file from the downloads folder to my new folder and I can do it like this cp path to the downloaded file and the path of the destination file okay cool let's continue next I will go to my Arduino folder and I will make sure that the file is being copied here it is 
Next, we need to install Fuse. To install Fuse, we first need to run this command. Then you need to enter your password. And after this command, you need to run sudo apt install libfuse2. This will install Fuse and by installing Fuse we will be able to run the executable files. Okay, now if you type lsla you will see that this file can be read and write however it cannot be executed. Consequently we need to add plus x permission. This means that we will basically able to execute the file after running this command. Command. Now if we type ls la, we will see that we can execute this file. Okay. Now, we need to make sure that we can properly recognize the USB port to which our ESP32 microcontroller is attached. Consequently, attach the ESP32 microcontroller to the computer. I will now scroll back and I will explain in the case of my board what you need to do. Basically with this board you should get a micro USB cable. One part of the micro USB cable should be attached to this port of ESP32 and another standard plug of the USB cable should be attached to your computer. Okay, once you do that, you can execute this command, lsusb. So let's see the output over here. Okay, this will list all the USB devices that are currently being used. And if your ESP32 microcontroller can be recognized, then you should see Silicon Lab CP210X UART bridge or something similar to this. CP210X UART is actually a controller that governs the communication between my computer and the ESP32. And Ubuntu Linux is able to automatically install this driver, so you don't need to worry. If you're using some other board type, you might see a different output. However, it's very important to see your board over here. This is very important. Okay, let's continue. From the computer and Arduino ID point of view, the USB ports are denoted either by TTY ACMX, where X is actually a number, or TTY USB X. We need to find the name of the port. That is, the port can either be TTY AAC, ACM or TTY USB. First of all, let's try with this thing. This command should list TTY ACM names and you can see over here that I don't see anything. This means that in my case, the port is denoted by TTY USB. So let's confirm that. And as you can see over here, I'm getting this output. This means that the port name is TTY USB 0. Next, we need to set the read-write permissions such that we can upload the sketch to the board. To set the read-write permissions, you need to run this command, sudo user mode dash a dash g dial out and your username. That's the first command. In my case, the username is Alexander. If you're not sure about your username, you should type who am I? And the output should be your username. Consequently, your username should be written over here. After that, we need to, we need to execute this command. And now, let's again execute this command. And you should see over here that we are able to read and write to our TTY USB 0 port. Okay, let's continue. There are two ways for running the file. The first approach is to go to Arduino folder 
actually I need to type not this I need to type the complete path and this is very important and in the Arduino folder you need to execute this file in Linux we can execute the files by typing this dot slash and the name of the file and now here you should be patient and Arduino IDE will start well this way of running Arduino IDE is a little bit difficult for new users a more suitable approach would be to click over here and to type Arduino and the shortcut should appear so let's create a shortcut over here such that we can run Arduino in this graphical way let's go back to the terminal now you can close the Arduino and you'll be back to the terminal window to create a shortcut let's first install gEditor gEdit actually is a very powerful program for quickly editing text files next let's go to this folder and in this folder let's create this file the content of the file is given over here and I will simply paste the file over here we are defining a shortcut the type is application here is the name over here you need to adjust your version of Arduino and over here you need to specify the path to the executable file here's my file if you're watching this video for example in July of 2024 the version might be different and consequently you need you need to adjust the version number over here okay save close and now let's try click over here and type Arduino and you can see a shortcut over here and you can simply start Arduino and here it is perfect next let's learn how to install the ESP32 library in Arduino ID to do that you need to go to the official page of ESP32 microcontroller board and here it is and over here you need to copy this link so you need to click over here okay then go back to Arduino click on file click on preferences and over here you need to paste the link here it is then you need to click on OK however we still didn't complete the process over here you need to click on tools then board and board manager and type over here ESP32 and it's very important to click on this link and not on this link that is click, o click over here and be patient this will take some time and over here you can see the installation progress after some time you will see this message this means that this library is properly installed next make sure that the ESP32 is attached to the computer then click on tools and over here you will see that the port is being recognized and consequently select this port then click on tools then click on board click on ESP32 and select your board in my case it is ESP32 S3 dev module okay next let's open a hello world blink example in the interest of brevity of this video tutorial I will use a built-in examples that come with the ESP32 library to open an example click on file then click on examples over here click on ESP32 and over here click on GPIO and open this example here it is what's the purpose and the main goal of this example the main goal of this example is to teach you how to turn on and off an internal LED namely every ESP32 microcontroller board comes with an LED however this is not an ordinary LED this LED can produce white light however it can also produce RGB it can produce red green and blue and this tutorial teach, teaches you how to sequentially 
create white light and then red green and blue I will modify this example slightly such that I demonstrate how to print something on a serial port over here I will create a serial by typing serial begin and I will type the baud rate the baud rate is the standard baud rate equal to this number and over here I will print several messages first of all I will print serial dot print line white light then over here I will print red light then over here I will print green light and over here I will print blue light okay now we are ready to upload this script however before uploading the script make sure that the proper port is being selected and that the proper board is still selected perfect click on upload and let's hope that everything will be fine you can see that okay perfect now let's open a serial port click over here serial monitor uh -huh. make sure that the proper baud rate is selected over here and you will see this output white red green etc now I will reset the board by pressing the reset button and everything will start from scratch you can see white light red light green light blue light and that's it simple as that here it's very important to mention the following first time you try to upload the code to the board you just purchased you might see this error a fatal error occurred failed to connect to ESP32 no serial data received namely over here while uploading the code you might see that message now how to deal with that message well you need to put your board in the download mode and you need to do it only once after you purchase the board let me demonstrate how to put the board in the download mode you can actually connect your board and keep the serial monitor open then find the boot button press the boot button and hold the boot button and then press the reset button and you will see this message ESP ROM and you can see that you are currently in download mode this is very important let's go back to the original script over here and let's just open a serial monitor without even uploading anything to the board then you can again boot hold boot press reset and release reset and you can see that you entered in the download mode that is without even uploading anything to the board you can through serial monitor see the messages sent from the board and you need to do it only once and once you do that it's basically set and forget it the board will be in the download mode and you can easily communicate with the board that is you will not need to entered in download mode before you actually upload the sketch. Okay, that's all for today.